Welcome to LearnHowToGarden.com and in today's episode of The 10 Minute Gardener I'm going to be showing you how to grow one of my favourite summer fruit and that's figs and I grow mine in pots. If you're not already subscribed to me at Learn How To Garden there is a link above this film. Click on that link, it'll take you to the website, input your email address and every month you'll get my free monthly newsletter and it also means I can let you know every time I upload a new film. I think one of the best fruit for most people to grow are figs. The smallest space you can grow a fig in, you can grow them in pots so they're movable, uh, they're not particularly difficult, I don't find they have a lot of pests or problems with them. And of course one of the best things on those warm summer days is a, a salad of warm figs with honey and goat's cheese. Well in my humble opinion it is. What we have here is uh, a nicely looking fig plant, it's got some figs growing quite happily on it. Figs quite quite a long time to grow. They'll go down to about minus four but these tiny little things up here, these are the baby figs and any of these that don't develop come the end of the year once the leaves drop off it, any of these that are bigger than a pea need to come off. Um, but we'll get some quite nice figs off this and as I say I grow mine in um, this is about an 18 inch pot um, and I grow them in a mixture of 50% John Innes number 3 and 50% Dalesfoot uh, wool compost and I found that that gives me really nice healthy plants and that's because they like quite a lot of potash and they do for these large leaves like quite a lot of nitrogen but they like it slow release and with mine I tend to feed them every week, the same as you would with tomatoes. So, but I don't use a particularly strong feed, the same as with my tomatoes. I use a weak feed, so basically you're feeding weekly, weekly is the easiest way to remember it, uh, and I use a seaweed feed, and once a fortnight I will spray these with uh, a seaweed feed again to actually sort of liquid feed the leaves, exactly the same as I do with my tomatoes. The best time for potting on a plant like this would be late March and we're a bit late now, we're in June but the plant that I've got here has been living with my mum and I don't think it's quite as happy as this one so I'm going to quickly show you how to pot it on, it's really really easy. Get a decent sized pot, remember it's going to live in this pot and the first thing you want to do is put some crocs on these holes, all crocs are, are old bits of terracotta pot, excuse me moving my roses, they were for my newsletter earlier, cover those holes and as I say I am going to use a mixture which is 50% John Innes number 3 and 50% Dale's Foot wool compost. That's already mixed in my barrow now and we can pop some in there and I need to ease this fig out of this terracotta pot. You can see that it really wants to move, it's got a root here, so we push through this nice large hole in this beautiful Witchford pot. If you ever want to treat yourself to some fantastic pots, Witchford pottery in England produce the best I know. Really nice healthy root system, but you want to get the crock out of the bottom. Some worm growing in here, I'll take him out although he wouldn't do any harm. And that gives you an idea about how much soil you've got to put in. You want the fig with about an inch left on the top. In the summer, you can imagine with these huge leaves, they lose water quite quickly, so you need to water these probably on a daily basis. So I'll just pop some of the compost in here, if I can find an old plant pot to use. Once you've got compost in the bottom, sit your fig on it so you've got about an inch, more compost round, and then firm it down quite well. Figs do like to feel quite constrained. If you're growing one outside, don't let it just have free run. If it has total free run in the garden, you'll get a fantastic architectural plant, but very, very little fruit. The old gardeners used to plant it about 18 inches away from a wall, 
and then they'd use bits of old slate around it to form like a great big outdoor pot. If you wonder what I'm working on, this is one of my Heath Robinson benches for potting on big plants in my polytunnel. And in the summer when these are growing, what I tend to do, and it's easier on this one to see, on any new growth I'll stop it after five leaves. I'll just pinch out the top. But it's really important you get new growth because the figs grow in this axis, leaf axis, on new growth. No new growth, no new figs. So it's into its new pot. I'll now water that generously. And as I say, we'll feed it each week with a weak tomato fertiliser and every fortnight it'll have the same spray as my tomatoes. And these are the leaves you'll get if you could only grow it for its architecture. And I have a passion for exotic plants, um, hardy exotics. I grow cold hardy palms, um, I grow tetrapanax, I grow ricinus like this beauty from seed here. And I would grow this architecturally, but what is fantastic is, as a bonus, it's going to produce really fresh, really succulent figs. If you haven't tried it, get on the net. There are some fantastic ones out there. Don't grow brown turkey. It's, you know, probably the least tasty of all of them. There are a couple of specialists in England who have a fantastic selection. If you're not in the UK, if you're in the States or Canada, I'm sure there are ones out there that you could grow. Mine, coming to the polytunnel for the winter, when they're kept slightly on the dry side and they'll quite happily take minus 10 degrees. All these little figs will come through and then the next year, voila, there's that beautiful fig, honey and goat's cheese salad. Thanks for watching Learn How to Garden.